Step back in time to the world of ancient Rome, where the Colosseum's walls echo with the tales of gladiators, here are some interesting facts about them. While many gladiators were slaves or prisoners of war, others were volunteers who sought fame, fortune, or a way out of debt. Some of these volunteers were even former soldiers or members of Rome's lower class. Gladiators underwent intensive training in specialized schools. These schools were akin to military boot camps, where they learned various combat techniques and how to use different weapons. There were several types of gladiators, each with their unique armor and weapons. For instance, the Mermillo fought with a sword and shield and wore a helmet with a fish-like crest, while the Retiarius was lightly armored and fought with a trident and a net. Contrary to popular belief, not all gladiator fights ended in death. The battles were costly, and the trainers often preferred to keep their skilled gladiators alive. Spectators could vote to spare a defeated gladiator's life. While rare, there were female gladiators, known as gladiatrices. They were considered exotic and often fought in special events. Successful gladiators could achieve significant fame and popularity. They were often depicted in art and could receive gifts from admirers. Some even had their own fan clubs. Gladiators had a surprisingly carb-rich diet, mostly comprising barley and beans. They also received excellent medical care for their time, including specialized gladiator doctors who treated their wounds. Upon entering gladiator school, they had to take an oath to endure being burned, bound, beaten, and killed by the sword, symbolizing their submission to their new life. Gladiators who survived long enough could be granted freedom by their master or could by their freedom. They received a symbolic wooden sword, Rudus, as a sign of their new status. Some retired gladiators became trainers or referees in gladiator schools, 